Hello guys and welcome to Crisis 3 running on two Titan RTX and SLI through NVLink bridge and Intel 9 generation core i9 9900K overclock at 5.3 gigahertz and 32 gigabyte of the cheapest possible DDR4 uh, system RAM Corsair Vengeance 2133 MHz CL13 uh, during this video guys I'm going to show you 4k resolution 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio I'm going to show you three different presets I'm going to show you of course everything will be maxed out such as very high but I'm going to show you anti-aliasing is off then I'm going to show you anti-aliasing SMAM GPU 2x and then I'm going to show you anti-aliasing MSA high 8x okay which is maxed out completely even the anti-aliasing so let's go ahead and get going guys I'm coming in today in real time English is not my first language but I'm being uh, but I was PC gamer PC uh, in uh, hardware enthusiast uh, PC overclocker since 1998 it's been over 21 years and I'm also a 3d uh, artist graphics designer and software developer web developer and hardware engineer so I have a lot of tips and experience to share with you guys my name is I play 4k AK I play AK AK I play 16k because I was the first youtuber guys that introduced you to 16k resolution a uh, gameplays on the YouTube and I recorded the first ever crisis 3 running 16k resolution um, gameplay in December 25th 2019 go ahead and check out that video over the iplay 16k.com or over the iplay 4k.com all right guys let's go ahead and get moving so um this is going to be the post human the first level of crisis and I uh, just like this level just to introduce you a little bit to show you the FPS to the first level of crisis and then we're going to move to the second level of crisis that I was testing with all my hardwares uh, it's going to be welcome to the jungle the second level and I was testing with all of my hardware uh, PC components uh, throughout the crisis 3 welcome to the jungle however uh, in the transmission between the level 1 and level 2 we have a beautiful um, Uh, beautiful uh, 3d scene rendered with the game engine and I'm about to go ahead and show it to you and I really like it so we can use it as a benchmark as well so I'm going to go ahead and record it and next my videos will be also including this 3d scene with the Saika uh, crisis 3 PC game character and then when we're going to move to the welcome to the jungle in the elevator it's going to be um, just a gameplay but it's going to be as a uh, nice um, pretty much um, kind of stable FPS and it's great to use it as a benchmark okay guys don't forget to check out crisis 3 running 16k resolution on the same system with the two Titan RTXs and SLI the first ever crisis 3 at 16k resolution uploaded to the YouTube don't don't mess it out guys witness as the first viewers it's going to be nice um, as again reminder this is how I'm running it today okay because I just woke up and I have a squeaky voice because I already recorded three videos for you so right now it's going to be a great 3d scene that I really like uh, because I believe they're using a little bit modified head uh, 3d mesh with the higher polygon topology with the higher polygon count topology um, because pretty much guys the crisis 3 based on the cry engine uh, 3 developed by the cry tech company and it's a little bit different approach in terms of the game uh, game development versus the cry engine 2 in crisis 1 why because let's say see this uh, 3d character right here 3d model 3d mesh whatever you want to call it the psycho character in crisis 3 pc game well um it's split into multiple 3D meshes in CryEngine 3, and it wasn't the case in CryEngine 2. Um, it has the head 3D mesh, arms 3D mesh, leg 3D mesh, torso 3D mesh, and uh, I believe the 3D mesh is limited up to 5,000 polygon count, polygons count, 
and per each 3D mesh in the, under the CryEngine 3 you cannot load like 15 or 20,000 3D models in the, three, uh, in the CryEngine 3 but you could do load even 60,000 3D, uh, 3D meshes in CryEngine 2 in Crisis 1 but it's not accepted in CryEngine 3 and CryEngine 5 keep that in mind I play with the all of the three game engines uh, while I was trying to develop my own game uh, but I decided not to use it because the CryEngine 5 I find out had a big issue with the SLI on my 4 Titan Max LGP architecture so every time I was running above 2 Titan X Max LGP architectures I was receiving uh, pretty much a flickering and uh, I wrote to the Cry uh, Crytek company the answer uh, with the happy answer that you know didn't produce any results However, guys, I just recorded the Hunt Showdown in 16K resolution on two Titan RTXs in SLI because the Hunt Showdown in, two th in December 2019 uh, NVIDIA drivers and in the latest Hunt Showdown update by Crytek in December 2018 supports SLI now. So CryEngine 5 now supports SLI even if on the Crytek website it says that CryEngine 5 will support SLI in 2023. Who will be waiting 2023 <laughs> because in 2025 the PC gaming will be dead, console gaming will be dead, and people will be moved to the mobile gaming and streaming services. When the 5G internet will be as average internet, and one gigab gigabit internet will be as average internet for a regular consumer. Okay, guys, so we, we saw that scene, it's a beautiful scene right now. I'm going to show you the welcome to the jungle level, second level in the Crisis 3 game and it's going to be the elevator scene right here with the kind of stable FPS so as you can see 133 FPS average right now under this scene so we can compare it with 2RTX 2080 Ti same scene that I recorded on the same computer but it was only 2RTX 2080 Ti video, uh, video cards in this slide guys as you can see at the left top display information system that they call Tougher uh, updated every second why it's tougher because T stands for the temperature U stands for the usage or utilization F stands for the frequency FR stands for the fan rotation and as you can see right now our GPU utilization above 92 percent which is good SLI utilization at least we're 1.9 times faster than a single Titan RTX keep that in mind Fan rotation 100% as you can see for video card 1 and video card 2. On my Z uh, CPU I'm not showing fan rotation because I'm running today all-in-one Corsair H150i. Um, with a cooler setup which is beautiful guys. It's worth $159. It has 360mm radiator and it has three 120mm fans. And I'm using today liquid metal thermal compound paste which is also the best thermal compound paste available in 2018 by Thermal Grizzly. If you're looking to lower your uh, temperature on your components as low as possible, liquid metal is the best thermal paste out there. Okay guys, so this is beautiful scene as you can see. Right now it's an open uh, world right here, over here, and I showed you the kind of closed corridors in level one, and a lot of, as you can see, volumetric particles a lot of post processing effects such as like this and uh, yeah a lot of 3d meshes a lot of textures a lot of even shaders cast, uh, complex shaders so we saw it on the level um, 2 welcome to the jungle FPS kinda started with 133 FPS average and then it went to still above 100 FPS but kinda 115 FPS average and it's going to drop a little bit up to 109 FPS throughout the whole welcome to the jungle level sometimes uh, getting up to 115 FPS average. Hopefully this makes sense, guys, okay? And the average latency delay below 10 milliseconds, so pretty much the gameplay is very comfortable. Okay, the CPU utilization below 80% of the, uh, on average, and maximum, as I saw, as you can see right now, 83%. This is maximum that I saw without the anti-aliasing, and it's going to decrease when I'm going to improve the anti-aliasing. I just saw 88%, so below 90% this is maximum and this is six cores six threads to be able to run uh, the 5.3 gigahertz on uh, Intel uh, 9 generation I uh, uh, CPUs I need to shut down two cores on under my i9 9900k and I need to uh, 
disabled the hybrid trading technology. So I'm running six cores, six threads, but stable 5.3 gigahertz, uh, stable and uh, cool. So um, what I'm gonna do right now, guys, anti-aliasing SMA M GPU 2X. Okay, and uh, guys, I just woke up and I'm coming in real time, but a lot of experience in my brain, a lot of stuff I wanna share with you. Don't forget to smash that like button. I'm going to reboot the level. Let's go ahead and check out the two times uh, MGPU anti-aliasing designed by the Crytek. Okay, load post-human level, the last save game uh, from the post-human level. Because as again, you want to keep your eye. Let me real quick go ahead and show it to you what at the left top, what it means. You want to keep your eye right here. This is the VRAM usage almost right now is 9,000 megabytes, actually 9 gigabytes. The total VRAM usage today is allowed 24,000 megabytes, a little bit over 24,000 megabytes per each video card of Titan RTX for the frame buffer. Uh, the system RAM usage right now is almost 10,000 megabytes, 10 gigabytes. The total system RAM usage is allowed, as I already told you, 32,000 megabytes. Um, the CPU usage right here, I also showed you all the six cores just in case, and the GPU usage right here. This is very important things. And fan rotation 100%. Hopefully this makes sense, guys. Uh, FPS as high as possible is better, and the latency delay as lower as, as better. All right, let's go ahead and keep moving, guys. I'm not going to edit this video. This is one take. 4K resolution at three different presets. This is how you want to play it. But if you owning two Titan RTX and SLI, I advise you to go ahead and play this game at um, 4K resolution at least with the all the way anti-aliasing. Or with the list to two times anti-aliasing to be able to stress our GPUs, as you can see, above 95% per GPU1 and GPU2, which is good SLI scalability and uh, we're receiving 1.9 times faster performance than single Titan RTX. Guys, in about a second I will explain to you comparison RTX 2080 Ti and SLI versus Titan RTX and SLI, two video cards versus two video cards as well as single RTX 2080 Ti versus single Titan RTX and SLI and uh, versus single Titan RTX video card uh, single video card versus single video card and i will explain to you when it makes completely sense to buy two titan rtx's if you have cash and when it doesn't make any sense to buy two titan rtx's versus two rtx 2080 ti video cards or single rtx 2080 ti versus single titan rtx let's jump in over here and i will explain to you so guys titan single titan rtx video card has an advantage over the let me remind you real quick our resolution and I will continue with explanation with a nice basic English so everybody can understand from a very experienced guy, software developer, 3D artist, hardware engineer guys. Um, so here we go. Titan RTX guys has an advantage over RTX 2080 Ti video card because it has 256 CUDA core more than RTX 2080 Ti video cards that we're utilizing in PC gaming in 2018. And both video cards was released in the beginning of 2018. RTX 2080 Ti was released a little bit earlier than that. Um, and this advantage can be compensated by the RTX 2080 Ti video card, single video card, when we overclock our RTX 2080 Ti video card above 2000 MHz on our GPU and above uh, 15000 MHz on our VRAM. Okay, because stock frequency on the VRAM on the RTX 2080 Ti is 14000 MHz. So, um, and this will be compensating the performance that 256 CUDA cores and Titan uh, and uh, RTX 2080 Ti will be equal to Titan RTX running at stock, or when Titan when RTX 2080 Ti is maximum overclock on air, as I mentioned, or even above those frequencies, or it's going to be a little bit faster by hair, one or two FPS or three FPS faster. However, Titan RTX can be also overclocked, but uh, you don't want to buy Titan RTX single video card when, uh, you know, you better buy two RTX 2080 Ti video cards for that type of money, okay, if you buy a brand new product. 
if you're not buying used like new on eBay. Um, so, um, single RTX 2080 Ti is outperforming in terms of money and performance as single Titan RTX at stock. Okay, when single RTX 2080 Ti is overclocked for free to receive that performance, an extra $1,500 for free. This is amazing value. However, when we're using two Titan RTXs and SLI and comparing those two video cards, Titan RTXs versus two video cards, RTX 2080 Ti and SLI, now this 256 CUDA cores advantage becomes 512 CUDA cores advantage because every single Titan RTX has 256 CUDA core advantage over RTX 2080 Ti video card. 512 CUDA course advantage is a very serious advantage. Okay? And um, you cannot overclock on air your two RTX 2080 Ti video cards, two of them in SLI, to match two Titan RTX video cards in SLI due to 512 CUDA course advantage on the Titan RTXs. And even if two Titan RTXs will be running stock, they will be hair faster or in almost in all the scenarios equal to RTX 2080 Ti video cards without any overclock but 50% it will be hair faster to Titan RTXs and SLI video cards but the scenario must be like right now even better than right now it should be GPU 1 utilization 99 dash hundred percent and gpu2 utilization 99 dash hundred percent right now we're less than that keep in mind that each titan rtx has 4608 cuda cores that means that one percent of loss throughout our gpu utilization is equal to 47 cuda cores to be uh, exactly, it's 46.08 CUDA cores, but we cannot split it like that. So it's 47 CUDA cores. 1% of loss under our utilization, right now, as you can see, second GPU 96%, so we lost 4% of the CUDA cores utilization is not utilized. So it is right, right over here utilization of the GPU so it is guys right now 3% lost 4% loss under the GPU too and that 4% is 47 times 4 that's about 180 CUDA cores okay so when you utilizing 89% per GPU 1 and GPU 2 and SLI in 4k resolution this is kind of going to be divorce scenarios for the GPU utilization under the two Titan RTXs in 4K resolution games with maximum visuals, pretty much you lost that advantage. And similar utilization of the RTX 2080 Ti with the higher overclock will pick up advantage over your two Titan RTXs if your Titan RTXs two video cards will be running stock. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense. I explained to you the formula, the mathematical approach and I throughout my videos as you can see guys I'm taking as mathematical approach because I'm a software developer and uh, e even the Elon Musk believes that mathematical approaches in terms of the solutions is the best solutions uh, on the planet earth and I believe it so too okay so I just explained to you the formula so every single percent lost is equal to 40 47 CUDA cores okay so to be able to last 512 megabytes of the CUDA cores pretty much you want to be utilizing your GPU about 89 88% 87 something like that so during that type of utilization you lost under the two Titan RTXs and SLI that advantage of 512 CUDA cores okay and higher frequencies on the RTX 2080 Ti and RTX 2080 Ti because it has less CUDA cores it has capability to overclock higher without the bottlenecking the uh, Turing GPU architecture 
to show higher GPU overclock in terms of frequencies. And in terms of the VRAM overclock, they're using the same VRAM, GDR6 Samsung. And both of those VRAMs is overclockable, stable to 16,000 megahertz with, with, with additional 2,000 megahertz additional overclock for free. Keep that in mind. On the, under the Titan RTX or under the RTX 2080 Ti video cards. They're using the same chips. Okay? But in terms of the GPU overclocking, um, RTX 2080 Ti can go farther than Titan RTX. All right, guys. So let me go ahead and restart it, reboot it for you. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go back to the game. I just explained to you the formulas and comparison Titan RTX uh, two video cards in the slide versus uh, two RTX 2080 Ti in the slide and when the advantages uh, will be applied with the two Titan RTXs and why you want to have two Titan RTXs. Pretty much you want to buy two Titan RTXs, guys, when you're playing the resolution, 8K resolution or above. Otherwise, it's just a waste of money and... Uh, energy I advise you to go ahead and buy two RTX 2080 Ti for the price of single Titan RTX and you will be Gucci or buy two Titan RTX in 2022 on eBay um, used like new they're going to be uh, running on eBay used like new in 2022 for 500 bucks two of them will guys bring you the performance that is capable to run any games in 2022 in 8k resolution and maximum visuals without the anti-aliasing about 50-60 fps keep that in mind hopefully this makes sense As again guys this video is not the uh, not about the gameplay this video is not about the pixel comparison but I'm going to upload this video in 94K resolution as I'm recording right now. 60 FPS, but I just want to let you know, guys. So look at that high FPS. This is with 8 times MSAA. Still below 15 milliseconds average latency delay, which is very comfortable gameplay in Crisis 3 game. And uh, still above 100 FPS, but at some points, as you can see, when we have a lot of 3D meshes, 3D models, the FPS drops to 85-95 FPS average. So what is distressing GPU the most? The polygon count. The polygons count on 3D meshes, guys. The texture is not stressing the GPU at all, especially Turing GPU architecture. Pretty much it's going to be, um, you should be concerned about VRAM when you're talking about the high resolution textures, not about your GPU CUDA cores or GPU uh, utilization. But um, when we're talking about a lot of details, this is exactly those details brought by the polygons count on 3D meshes. And also the post processing effects and uh, the volumetric particles life cycle is stressing GPU computing performance a lot and uh, so I just explained to you what is stressing so you will have now a picture what kind of GPUs you're looking and what what is this the taxing most taxing on your GPU performance in terms of the FPS count so guys 92 FPS average above uh, below 15 milliseconds latency delay very comfortable gameplay GPU utilization almost excellent. GPU one is 99%. So right now we're only losing 1%, which is 47 CUDA cores under the GPU one, under the video card RTX 20, uh, Titan RTX. 47 CUDA cores advantage we just lost. So 256 minus 47. And then under the GPU two, video card two, we just lost 3%. So 47 times three, 256 minus 47 times 3 equal whatever could the course advantage now we have over the single RTX 2080 Ti and SLI because pretty much it's going to be utilized the same at 4K resolution. Crisis 3 is possible in 8K resolution with two RTX 2080 Ti's video cards as well, but this is going to be the last resolution that is possible. 10K resolution is impossible on two RTX 2080 Ti due to 11 gigabyte of VRAM and we're going to overload our VRAM. But Titan RTX has no issue to play 10K resolution with playable and almost comfortable gameplay 
everything maxed out, keep that mind on too tight energy access. And the maximum possible runnable resolution in Crisis 3 will be the maximum PC gaming resolution, which is 16K resolution. Of course, it's not playable status, it's benchable, testable status, but at least we can see the values and we can compare it with the future uh, GPU architectures in 2022, 2023, and even 2025 when PC gaming will be dead. Guys, it looks like I'm losing my voice. I'm about to have a breakfast, but I decided to go ahead and record the video for you. So look at that FPS, still, still very high FPS, and latency delay is still below 20 milliseconds. The SLI scalability, I would say, very good SLI scalability, at least 1.95 times faster than single Titan RTX. But as again, for 4K resolution, not advising you to have two Titan RTXs. Guys, get yourself, even if you play maxed out with all type of anti-aliasing, get yourself two RTX 2080 Ti, okay? 11 gigabyte of viewing will be more than enough for 4K resolution, everything maxed out, even in games 2022. And the it's kind of the same power of the GPU uh, Turing architecture on both video cards. 512 CUDA cores is not that big advantage, but it's about 20% of additional GPU utilization of RTX 2080 Ti video card. Not 20, I would say 15%, but it's still per each video card. So it's 30% overall performance boost if RTX 2080 Ti will receive uh, 512 CUDA cores. And if NVIDIA will release RTX 2080 Ti Super, I, I think they're going to use the Titan, uh, Titan RTX uh, GPU which is TU-102, and I believe they're going to use 16 gigabyte of VRAM. If they're not going to use 16 gigabyte of VRAM, guys, they're going to do a big mistake. Because with 16 gigabyte of VRAM, RTX 2080 Ti Super will be ready. Two of them and SLI will be ready for 8K resolution. Similar performance to Titan RTX. But Titan RTX, two of the Titan RTX and SLI will outshine two RTX 2080 Ti video cards and SLI in resolution above 8K resolution. But 99% of the gamers is not going to play above 8K resolution because they're not going to be like me, the guy who is striving to show you the maximum possible runnable resolution in PC games in 2019 and 2020 since 2016. Wow, I'm losing my voice badly, guys, and we're about to wrap it up. I need to drink something and eat something. I just woke up. But hopefully I shared a lot of great goods, uh, uh, goodies with you, great information, great experience, and great formulas. So you can apply these fer formulas in the future as PC Gamer to understand better PC components. And especially when it comes to uh, 3D rendering in real time and uh, GPU architectures and video cards technologies no matter what what kind of company it is nvidia or amd so pretty much for 8k resolution you need for comfortable 8k resolution 12 gigabyte of vram is not enough for very comfortable you need at least 16 gigabyte of vram and um, i understand why nvidia put 24 gigabyte of vram on titan rtx's i couldn't understand it before i thought the 16 gigabyte vram will be good enough but go ahead and watch my Crisis 16K resolution video. I'm pretty sure that NVIDIA secretly know, known that it's required for 16K resolution. And they probably was thinking that while they were designing Titan RTXs or t rexs how CEO of uh, NVIDIA Jensen Huang saying, the CEO of NVIDIA in 2019, I'm such a fan of this guy saying that T Rexes, he called Titan RTXs. And uh, yeah, I believe uh, 16 gig uh, 24 gigabyte is the great um, VRAM capacity for the frame buffer for any kind of scenarios, guys. Anyway, see this right here? This texture look a little bit like a 2D texture, flat. When you're going to look at this texture, 16K resolution, very high, very high. It's going to look almost like a 3D mesh. Go ahead and check it out, guys. 
over there I play 16k.com YouTube channel when I'm going to show you Crisis 3 running 16k resolution rendered in real time as a first YouTuber first video ever uploaded in December of 2019 I did two videos I did one video without the comments when Crisis was Crisis 3 was crashing but I updated my origin client and it stopped crashing and then uh, after that I recorded the second video of Crisis 3 in 16k resolution with my comments alright guys that's pretty much it I guess we saw every single thing that we need to see we saw the FPS the average go ahead and rewind check out at this laptop corner let me real quick go ahead and show you about my PC components and we're gonna keep moving Some more information and here's the information guys pretty self-explanatory on the background this is my picture with the titan rtx uh so this is the gpu utilization with the six core six strats as you can see we still have some some room to breathe but as again this is 4k resolution the better way to play with two titan rtx is 8k resolution very comfortable gameplay by the way so um 5300 megahertz on my CPU core pair, each CPU cores, six cores, six threads, two cores disabled, hyper trading technology is disabled. In a second, I will show you why. 5300 multiplier as external multiplier frequency and 50 multiplier as my um, AVX instruction frequency. So 5000 megahertz for the AVX instruction frequency and 5300 megahertz or 5.3 gigahertz for the external G uh, CPU frequency. Cheap as possible Asus Rock Maximus 11 here Wi Fi model motherboard. Do not buy this motherboard or do not buy Asus Maximus 10 here Wi Fi. This is the cheapest version of the Hero um, uh, motherboards, and you better buy extreme version. But as again, I would stay away from Asus Z370 chipset and Z390 chipset. Go ahead and buy yourself Gigabyte, it will last you longer in terms of durability and you will have less problems uh, with your usb and stuff like that i believe they having a lot of problems the way they're managing the usb ports on the maximus 10 and maximums 11 here as well as dim slots there is some issues you will have in the future so in terms of durability gigabyte will be the best or by the msi z370 or z390 board for the equal price you will be in better uh, shape so uh cheapest possible ddr4 because i do not believe in ddr4 frequency value over the uh 1440p resolution which is 4k resolution and above i believe the cheapest ddr4 memory will system ram will do just fine so it's 1066 megahertz times 2 2133 megahertz because it's ddr4 and very aggressive timing though cl13 when this ddr4 2133 megahertz set at cl11 timing and it's possible it's easy to do in the bias the reason why i didn't do it during this video because i tested with the same memory two rtx 2080 ti so we can compare two rtx 2080 ti maximum overclock on air versus two titan rtx's running on stock i just did it on purpose so i'm going to do a split screen for you or i'm going to attach this video right now in the end of this video for you to watch go ahead and now watch it and uh, use it for your own analysis so um what else the graphic cards for those trolls of course to tighten rtx's guys at 24 gigabytes gdr6 samsung as you can see okay everything was running stuck today let me real quick go ahead and show you the msi after burner right here everything was running stuck this video is unedited keep that in mind so here we go guys this is the my core i9-9900k emulated as i5-9600k versus the i9-9900k stock but a core 16 threads versus my six core six threads look at this single thread performance i'm overperforming by 45 points i'm having 625 points versus 580 points over the stock core i9900k with a core 16 threads yes it's beating me on a multi-threaded performance because come on 16 threads versus six six threads it's almost three times over but the score is not three times over as you can see because those logical cores logical threads 
um, they're 1.5 times slower than physical cores. That's why I shut down the hyper trading technology to be able to utilize only the physical cores to have the fastest frequency as possible, stable 5.3 gigahertz. The, my maximum stable frequency with eight cores, 16 threads is 5.1 gigahertz. So 200 megahertz advantage per each core, the higher impulsing frequency. And um, yeah, and as you can see in terms of domination, I'm dominating by 45 points, single thread performance. And um, the a, a 16 threads not far away from me guys in terms of multi trading performance as well. And we, we don't need the 16 cores, virtual cores in the Crisis 3 or any games. This is a bunch of waste. This is just a bunch of additional latency delay. So I uh, terminated the additional latency delay to make the latency delay as low as possible with the f maximum frequencies as high as possible. Hopefully this makes sense. If you're a troll, if you don't understand that, then I'm sorry. Look, if I'm going to compare with 1950X, 32 threads, AMD CPU running stock, I'm dominated by 225 points. <laughs> and this CPU was available in 2017 for sale two years ago it cannot it cannot compete in games in anyhow I'm almost two times faster in games in terms of frequencies performance computing per each thread okay guys hopefully this makes sense I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up by the way my desktop resolution today was set at 16k resolution i get used to it guys after one month right now when i'm watching 4k resolution desktop it's looking so ugly to me so large like 1080p or 800 by 600 pixels for those veteran gamers i get so used to 16k resolution with the 500 dpi as you can see scale it's just unbelievable guys okay that's it self-explanatory over here my ram system ram performance data Compared with your faster frequencies, just in case. But keep in mind, CL13, and it can set in the bias for free CL11 and stable. And CL11, guys, during my test, let me explain to you real quick. In 3D Mark uh, Ultra version 1.1, 4K resolution, I scored uh, by 12 points higher than DDR4 4000 megahertz CL18 on the same system. Can you believe it? With the I scored higher with 22 points with the DDR4 cheapest possible 2133 megahertz CL11 very aggressive timing so aggressive timing is also very crucial in terms of PC gaming keep that in mind I would better rather set free aggressive timing by overclocking my DDR4 for free than buying 600 investing 600 dollars towards 32 gigabytes 4000 megahertz CL18 uh, DDR4 memory and to have similar performance to my 2133 megahertz CL11 okay hopefully this guys makes sense thank you so much for watching right now I'm putting some great videos for you to check out I just lost my voice don't forget to smash that like button for support and motivation for me to record more great videos visit my sponsors so I'm going to collect those extra pennies and invest it back into the community with better reviews better everything and I'm not rich guys keep that in mind and uh, right now I'm putting some great videos for you to check out that I think that you need to check it out uh, two Titan RTX at 16k resolution then uh, RTX 2080 Ti at 4k resolution four Titan X Maxwell GP architecture and 4k resolution and two Radiant Pro Duos with the last four AMD GPUs Fuji XT in Crossfire that in 2016 AMD technology is beating right now was beating and is beating even right now any technology in terms of video cards of AMD in 2019 can you believe it so AMD is not progressing they will be go bankruptcy guys the rising 3000 series CPUs guys is a nonsense it cannot match one year old outdated Intel technology it cannot even match it even if the marketers like Linus Nexus and all other guys because it's trending they pick up this because it's trending and they're using that and kind of promoting the AMD at the same time probably even getting paid by AMD or if not getting paid because it's trending they're getting paid anyways by the ads and by the views but I'm not the guy like that I'm providing the truth even if it hurts 
and it's disturbed that 99% of people reality that like to stay in comfort and like to not, do not to improve themselves and like to just stay in comfort there chill lazy and stuff and happy happy but this youtube channel is not about this this youtube channel is about the truth about the improvements about the innovation creativity and bringing the value to the society so this will return the value back to you this is my beliefs and this is the beliefs that are going to be pursued over the iplay4k.com youtube channel or over the iplay16k.com youtube channel and i'm the first youtuber guys that showed you 16k resolution gameplays okay go ahead and check it out and i will see you guys in the next videos till the next time have a great day